Hello everyone, my name is Simon and I'll be your host for today's webinar brought to you by the University of Helsinki titled Study Agricultural, Environmental and Resource Economics at the University of Helsinki in Finland. And during today's webinar, you will learn more about the University of Helsinki in general. It's the oldest and largest university in Finland and it has repeatedly been ranked among, amongst uh, world's top universities. You'll learn more about the Agricultural, Environmental and Resource Economics master's program and why you should choose the university as your study destination and of course uh, the much needed information on how to apply. And without further ado, it is time to send my greetings to Helsinki. Uh, from one location in Helsinki, we have three presenters joining and I would like to introduce Marco Lindros, the program director, Antonis Rezitis, who is the professor of agricultural economics and policy, as well as a student sharing her experience and her name is Ishi Haikinen. Welcome guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. And then last but not least, we also have from another location in Helsinki joining Michaela Matila, who is the admissions advisor. Welcome to you as well, Michaela. Thank you and welcome to all. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure having you in. And now that the audience has uh, uh, gotten an idea of who you guys are, I believe that they are here to hear more from you, actually, rather than from me. So without further ado, it is time to give the floor to Isi, who will start off this webinar. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks, Simon, and welcome everyone on my behalf of, as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about the university in Helsinki in general, and then Mark, Marco and Antonius are going to introduce you to our master's program. And um, yeah, I hope we can convince you in coming to study here in Helsinki and join us in being one of the best. All right. So yeah, um, the University of Helsinki is among the top 1% per, uh, percent of the world's research universities. So if you're interested in getting really high quality education, you should seriously consider Helsinki as an option. And today we'll be talking more about the master's program in agricultural, environmental and resource economics. Um, here's our content for this webinar. So first, I'm going to introduce you to Finland, uh, tell you briefly about the University of Helsinki. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to the VG campus, where the Faculty of Agriculture and Forestry is located. And then, of course, the most interesting part is the introduction to student life, because that's the most fun part. And then uh, Marco and Antonio are going to uh, briefly walk you through the master's uh, study track. And then after that, uh, we're going to walk you through the application process, and then we're going to have some time for your questions and answers. So hopefully you'll get a good idea uh, about us and get to know us a bit more. Oh, the wrong button. Okay, so this right here is a typical Finnish uh, landscape. Uh, we're the land of a thousand lakes, which is an understatement because there's 188,000 lakes in Finland. So nature, the forest, the lakes, uh, is really important for Finnish people uh, and we like to go there and kind of calm down and get rid of the everyday stress. Um, you, you also get to enjoy all the four seasons in Finland, which, is, which might be pretty exotic for most of you guys. We have the nightless night summers and you can see the, the northern lights and cool stuff like this. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Finland is one of the northernmost countries in the world, and while it might be off the beating track, we're definitely not behind any kind of development. We're the leading, uh, <laughs> we lead the world in education, government transparency, stability, and of course, saunas. Saunas are a very important tradition for Finnish people, and pretty much all the housing units in Finland um, have a sauna. So, like, that's the best part to, like, cope with the cold winters is to kind of enjoy the warmth of the planet. Um, we're also in the world's top 10 of most highly educated nations, and we're one of the safest countries in the world. Uh, we, we have an ideal location between the East and the West, which, which makes us kind of a unique place between the Europe and the Russia. Uh, we also have sunny nature, which you could probably tell from the picture that I showed you before. And our capital, Helsinki, is a pocket-sized metropolis. It's ranked number three in the 10 best cities to live in. 
And we're a very international student city, and we have over 63,000 students. <laughs> this is a picture of the Helsinki City Center, where one of uh, the University of Helsinki's uh, campuses are located in. The White Big Church is a really popular uh, touristic uh, site as well, and our campus is right, right uh, next to it. <laughs> Thank you. So the University of Helsinki is a top-ranking university, like we mentioned before. Um, it's the best university in Finland, and in international rankings, like Simon said before, we're constantly in the top 100, and I think in the past few years, we've been in the top 50 and 40 as well. We're also the oldest and the largest university in Finland, and we have around 35,000 de degree students here, which of 6% are international students. Uh, there are 11 faculties and four campuses within Helsinki, and you can also study a wide range of uh, studies in English, uh, like master's, doctoral, exchange, and summer school study tracks. Okay, so we're moving on to the VG campus and the Faculty of Agriculture and Forestry. Uh, VG campus is in the geographical center of Helsinki, although not in the city center. Uh, it's really easy to get there, though. Uh, there's at least about 10 buses that lead from the city center to the VG campus uh, every three minutes or so, so it's a really fast and easy commute. We also have a very uh, modern campus library where you can get most of your um, students, I mean your course books. Uh, there's a lot of studying spaces and group workspaces there as well. Uh, there's a lot of student housing on campus, um, which is a great great area to kind of network in as well. There's a lot of exchange students uh, students living there as well as Finnish students. And there's also a fitness center and a gym in the campus and the campus right next to it, which is only like two bus stops away. So we have really good services on the campus. There's also six student restaurants on the Wiki campus where you can get really easy, uh, easy and fast lunches, and they're super cheap, so you can only uh, get a lunch for 260. Our faculty um, focuses on really important issues in the world right now, such as the environmental state and the use of resources. And it's located here on the Wiki campus with three other faculties. And our faculty is the fifth largest faculty in the University of Helsinki with 2,700 students and 480 postgraduate students and around 500 staff members. Uh, the Faculty of Agriculture and Forestry also have two departments within it, uh, which are Agricultural, Forest, Food and Environmental Sciences and Economics and Management. You can also study um, 16 different majors within the faculty and we get about 400 new students every year, and we get about 200 master's degree graduates each year as well. Our faculty is also the only one in Finland to offer university level uh, studies and education in fields such as food sciences, uh, agrotechnology, consumer economics, and environmental economics. All right, so now to the fun part, which is the student life at the University of Helsinki. Uh, this picture is actually from the VG campus. It's one of the research fields um, that students are kind of getting to know what kind of crops we're getting and what we're doing on the fields. Um, so pretty much the student life rolls around uh, student organizations, and there's altogether 12 of them uh, within the Faculty of Agriculture on the VG campus. Um, the student organization's main task is to promote the interest of students, and they do that by, by acting as an active member on the board of the faculty as well as the University of Helsinki. And of course, they organize diverse uh, activities for all their members. Uh, the most fun part is they throw a lot of parties, game nights, sit down dinners, which are super fun. You can get their students that. It's pretty different from, I'm guessing, uh, studying ab abroad. It's pretty much a a state down dinner with three courses, um, but it's not focused really on eating and more on the drinking part. And we're going to get to sing a lot of drinking songs and uni songs and get to know people. We also focus on important stuff such as excursions or visits to uh, companies related to your studies or your future possible uh, employers. 
And we have sporting events, we have team, teams that go and play, for example, floorball or badminton and stuff like that together. And after, I mean, in the beginning of each uni year, there is a lot of uh, freshman activities organized. And that's really important for exchange students as well, because that's when you start your, your studies at the university. So you'll, you'll get to network with a lot of people and have heaps of fun. So uh, student organizations are definitely the best way to get to know other students and be a part of the fun learning student society. It's also important to remember that um, there is a lot of active members within these associations that really help to create the connection between international exchange students and, and the Finnish students. So if you're worried about not finding friends or, or stuff like that when coming to study here, you don't have to worry about that. You're not going to be left outside at all. All right, so career services. Uh, the University of Helsinki offers a lot of uh, career services. We, have, we actually had our first career festival uh, this fall organized by the university. And then we have a similar one called Vitio Arena, which is here on the campus. And that's focused more on the faculty's uh, kind of departments and the main kind of sector on the private and organizational uh, area where you might be kind of located in the working life. Um, they have different kinds of um, a resume workshop, LinkedIn profile workshop, they're going to help you fine tune your profile so your future employers are going to be really impressed by you. And then they might even be able to take your resume pictures, they're going to uh, be there to yeah, help you out with any kinds of questions about the working life. They also have these, uh, they also invite different uh, companies to come and display themselves. So they're going to be here at the campus for two days where you can meet your great your future employers, ask questions about what it's like to work in their company and, and what you should know coming into the working life and even pitch yourself to them and introduce yourself, maybe even hand out your resume. So that's really good. We also have um, online uh, working life services such as the recruitment website where you can find jobs that are suitable for students even uh, after you graduate. Uh, we have career counseling and this kind of coffee and career tips event where you can meet the alumni and kind of ask uh, what did you do? How did you get this job? And what should I focus on? And they're going to take you off. So that's good. And then, of course, there's always uh, possibilities for a partnership. Yeah. All right. Then, my mm -hmm. turn to talk to you a bit more about the master's program. Thank you very much, Espin. So, that was a very nice introduction to our university and student life. Yeah. Glad to have you. Yes. Yes, very much. So I will, as, as you said, I will, I will walk you through this environment and resource economics study track to begin with. So you see this nice, nice picture, which is kind of full of hope and full of friends. <laughs> so it's the kind of uh, we are trying to make the world a little bit better place here. And this is this is what, how the environment and resource economics study track looks like. So if you think about international programs that are close to ours. I think the most important two things that are really important about our program are to are these these things. So first of all, there's we're providing with a lot of different methods. So it's really ranging from dynamic models, dynamic optimizations to game theory, numerical simulations, and then you have econometric models. So you will have a lot of tools for your working life, whether it's in research, whether it's in private sectors. So you will have a lot of, lot of uh, practical tools to solve, solve problems. And the problems are really important problems, really important environmental resource problems like climate change issues, uh, marine ecosystem uh, issues, and, and of course they are also interconnected to each, each other. And the second very important thing that we have in this program is that we have a wide selection of themes that you can study. So not only if you have we are teaching your very good methods and very solid methods, but also you can specialize in, in different fields. So if you think about any well many many environmental resource problem problems, here you can really concentrate on this. So it's like 
you have climate energy, then you have ecological, economic issues, you have international fisheries agreements, environmental agreements, uh, like water, protect, water area protection. And this is, you know, it's a really a wide selection. And we integrate these, you know, methods to these, these issues here. And it's, what it's really about, if you're not familiar with environmental research economics, it's really joining natural science to economic thinking. So we are in the, in the middle of, of these uh, two kind of worlds. And that makes environmental research economics really a special and important subject. So this is how, how the study structure looks like. So we have uh, three core modules to start with. So we are studying like there are three courses on environmental economics that we will be studying. There is three courses in natural resource economics. This is uh, economics of aquatic resource, numerical model is one of my courses. Uh, and then there is a, a, a wide selection of methods as I just described. So there's cost benefit analysis, uh, non market valuation, and, and advanced microeconomics, and, and so on. And then there are these themes. So then in medicine, you can choose two thematic modules, which are then climate, politics, or then forest, forest issues. And then, of course, there is, you know, this master thesis seminar, and also we have some language courses about academic writing. And this is just an example of that, that you could be taking. Maybe something else, but just for your, for your uh, orientation, you would be starting with the orientation seminar. So this would be just basically uh, get together kind of seminar, meeting your fellow students and also some older students, the staff, and, and also getting to, you know, uh, familiarize yourself with uh, some, some of the topics that are out and deal, dealt, on, dealt with uh, in, in more detail later on. And then you would be taking in the first year then this environmental economics, natural resources and economics, so the basic courses and basic methods. And then at the latter part of the first year you would then take, for example, the climate change model. That would be uh, one example. It could maybe something else too, but this is an example. Then in the summertime, you might be take, taking the internship. You might start working with your master thesis seminar. Already in the first spring, you would be taking part in the master thesis seminar, so get a feeling what is what kind of the master thesis are we working on. And then in the second year, you might in the autumn that you might go to study abroad if you are interested in that. Many of our students do use that opportunity, like she has been. In I'm trying to. You're not trying to. <laughs> you will you will, you will get it. So, yeah. so almost all of all, all, all students do that. And then you could take, for example, the agricultural policy model, which Anthony is taking care of here, or something else. That depends on your own interest. And then, of course, finally, you would be completing your master thesis. And that is then the end of your master studies, but of course, the beginning of your career. Yeah. Is the, most important thing why you are really studying, studying here. And that was my, my part, and then I, uh, I, I let Anthony walk you through the next, next part. Okay, thank you, Marco, for <coughs> your presentation uh, of uh, the field of uh, environmental and resource economics. Now I'm going to present you the field of uh, agricultural economics. Um, <coughs> I think that everybody likes this uh, picture, at least, you know, the green of the picture. And um, <clears throat> agricultural economics provides expertise in economics, business administration, and quantitative methods for analyzing a wide range of, economics, of economic issues related to agricultural enterprises and agricultural food markets. Our graduate students learn to apply theories and quantitative methods to examine the profitability and competitiveness of agricultural and rural enterprises, and also to study the operation, structure, and performance of uh, agricultural and food markets, and also to analyze uh, various policy issues affecting these markets. Uh, studies include uh, applied projects and develop student skills to apply the knowledge in order to solve problems related to the agricultural sector. Students also are able to take uh, modules like uh, agricultural market and policy and production economics and farm management, which these modules provide adv advanced courses 
uh, uh, which specialize in agricultural economics. Uh, here is the structure of the agricultural economic study path. Uh, students have to complete studies of about 120 credits from both field specific advanced courses and uh, optional studies in the field or other degree programs. The field specific advanced uh, studies include uh, at least one of the first two modules. Students uh, uh, have to take either uh, agricultural marketing policy or production economics and farm management. The first module uh, provides three courses, price analysis uh, and market structure of the agri-food supply chain one, a, a more advanced course in price analysis and market structure of agri-food supply two, and international agricultural trade and trade theory. The other course uh, gives uh, three courses again, risk management in agriculture, production and cost theory, and theories and application in farm management. Also, they have uh, to take at least 15 credits of courses from both agricultural economics and environmental and resource economics fields. Also, 15, at least 15 credits uh, on, um, uh, on methodological uh, courses. The department offers a wide range of uh, methodological uh, courses like uh, cost benefit analysis, applied econometrics, environmental valuation, general equilibrium modeling, applied linear programming and advanced macroeconomics. So students have to take at least three of, of uh, the courses which we are offering, the methodological courses. Also, <coughs> the students have to take uh, uh, the maximum of uh, 45 credits of uh, optional studies, which um, these uh, optional studies package provide uh, courses in the field or in other uh, fields, uh, and also uh, some master thesis seminars and uh, internship. Uh, finally, students have to write a master thesis uh, which uh, accounts for 30 credits, and uh, this master thesis will enable students to apply and develop the theoretical and methodological skills on a topic related to agricultural economics, and it will serve as a good reference for their future career. Uh, applicants are expected to have um, an intermediate level uh, course in macroeconomics and basic courses in statistics and mathematical economics. And also, uh, our faculty has the expertise in the wide uh, uh, range of applied economics fields and uh, research methods like production economics, farm management, price analysis, industrial organization, agricultural policy, international uh, trade and econometrics. So teaching and research in agricultural economics are based on the active cooperation between students and faculty members, and this has led to a significant volume of authored published research paper between students and faculty members. The program provides excellent employment opportunities to our graduates because the demand is very high for graduates with good training in quantitative methods and economic analysis, and this program provides a very good training. The, broad, the program also provides excellent preparation for PhD studies, and our students can um, uh, follow uh, the uh, pursue uh, PhD studies either at the department or in other universities. Graduates can obtain position in various organizations in the public and private sector in the field of uh, agricultural economics and environmental and resource economics or uh, in fields where there is demand for applied economics. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, thank you very much. And actually, before uh, passing the floor on to Michaela, we have a video prepared. Uh, that contains the information regarding the uh, application procedure. And what I would like to inform our audience that the volume can be set locally uh, on your end. And guys, I'll see you back in two minutes uh, with Michaela's part of the presentation. Hope you enjoy and see you in a bit.
And now it is time to give the floor back to Mikaela, who will tell you a bit more about the admissions process. Just allow me to go into full screen with the presentation. Mikaela, and pass the floor on to you. Thank and you, Simon. Yours. Thank you. So just a quick run through on the application process. The basic application requirements are that you have to have an appropriate bachelor's degree. You need to meet the English language proficiency requirements, and you need to, need to meet the country-specific requirements. Um, info on acceptable ways of indicated in language skills and info on language tests can be found on our website. And also info on the country-specific requirements can also be found on our website. The application period is December 1st, 2016 to January 12th, 2017. And the results will be available in April and the studies will begin in autumn 2017. Um, the tuition fee for this specific program is 15,000 euros. And um, it's citizens of non-EU or EEA countries who do not have a permanent resident status in the area who are liable to the tuition fees. And the fee is per academic year. So, yeah. Um, and the first year invoice will be sent at the same time as the letter of acceptance. Our scholarship programs are intended for students, excellent students from outside the EU or the EEA. And it's divided into four categories. The first will be covering the tuition fee and the living costs, which is 10,000 euros. The second category is the living costs, 10,000 euros. The third is the tuition fee, and the fourth category is half of the tuition fee. And all of the scholarships also include the student union membership fee, which is, which is about 100 euros. And the scholarship application will be filled in in the same application system and at the same time with your online application to the master's program. And a lot of information about the scholarships and the selection process on the scholarships can also be found on our website. And you can also find a lot of information on housing and on permits and other issues regarding arriving to Finland on our website. Thank you. And if I'm not mistaken, we've come to the end of the presentation, and we are now in the questions and answers part, where you, our esteemed audience, can submit your questions through the Q&A panel, as mentioned before. We would like to submit them in writing. And now, today's presenters will be answering them verbally. And actually, before taking on the first one, allow me to thank Marco, Antonis, uh, Eshi, and Michaela for your time and sharing your expertise on this matter. So thank you indeed uh, for doing so. Uh, and we had a question that was submitted actually offline by a student um, who would like to know if there are any job facilities uh, inside the university for foreign students. Hi, job possibilities within the faculty or? Actually, that was the second one, but the actual question, I'm, and I'm quoting here, would be, uh, are there any job facilities inside the university for foreign students? So I'm guessing during the studies. So yes, actually we have a follow-up to that question, which is, yeah. what are the chances of a civil engineer to find a job in Finland while studying your master's? Oh. That's a good question. <laughs> well, I mean, engineers are always needed. Um, there's, like I said, the career services. We have the um, website for students where they can find uh, suitable suitable um, uh, work uh, online through that uh, portal. Um, when I was looking through it last spring, there was a lot of engineers asked for apprenticeship and stuff like that. So I'm sure there's possibilities for you to find a job, job here. But you should definitely um, look into it beforehand. So if you're in need of money, you should probably look, look onto the website before you come here and start applying before you're, you are in Finland, just to make sure. Thank you very much, Isi. No worries. Then, uh, we have a I just wanted to add that the career services, uh, if you type into Google career services, uh, the University of Helsinki, 
they're going to find like the website that has all the links to the portal and stuff like that. So it's so just a link to the to the portal where you can look for the jobs or apprenticeship places. Thank you very much. And the same attendee had a question: uh, if it's possible to pursue a PhD after the masters. Yes, it's, it's definitely possible. So, so we have our own PhD program. So we are offering a PhD level courses in environmental economics and natural resource economics, and also we cooperate with the economics uh, department, which is in the center of Helsinki, and they have a PhD level courses in microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics. Uh, they also have. Uh, uh, like special seminars. We have a seminar like environmental resource economics that is ongoing all the time. And, and our PhD students can participate in those courses. And many times we also uh, invite some foreign lecturers uh, to give a, give a you know, uh, course on some important topic. For example, next week we are going to get a course on uh, uh, natural resource economics and growth. So it's just a little bit like macroeconomics and macro resource economics linking, linking that one. So there are excellent possibilities to pursue a PhD studies. And our master program, it also has a research track. So that means that you can also, if you, are, if you have this goal that you want to make your PhD, you can already take some PhD courses during your master thesis. So that will, you know, shorten your time to earn your PhD and you will get you know, quicker access to the research issues and, and start preparing your your first first paper on the on the topic. And it's like uh, our PhDs are doing very well uh, worldwide. So they are hired, for example, my PhD was hired to Australia in a very good university and so on. So that's a, they have an excellent possibility for, for that from our program. Marco, thank you very much. Uh, before taking on the next question, we also have two short questions for you, our audience members. Just opened up a poll with the first question, if you would like to get more information on some aspects of the webinar, and we would also like to know if you guys are already planning on applying to this program. So feel free to give us your feedback, but more importantly, uh, please do submit your questions if you have any through the Q&A panel. You should find uh, on the right side of the platform. And we do have a question from Million. Ask uh, first, thanking you a lot for the presentation, saying it was really informative. And uh, Million is wondering if the program is available through distance learning as well. Um, our program, unfortunately, is not. Um, there is an open platform for some university courses, which is called the MOOC platform. It's spelled M O O C. Um, there are some courses there regarding, for example, climate change or programming and it, like a variety of different subjects, but not, not precisely environmental and natural resources or, or um, agricultural economics. Yeah, there are just a, just a few courses that you can, you can do uh, using this distance, distance learning. So most of, most of the time you would, you would be, have to be present, present here. Yes. Of course, you can you can take some you know brief travels, for example, when you are going abroad for you know internship or, or study abroad. Of course, you can study something, but it's it's fairly limited. So, so most of the time, we have to be present here, and that is that is because we our program is really interactive. As Anthony was saying, that we really want to have this interaction between our students and really you know supervise them very in close interactions. So we think that it's it's very important and essential. Yeah. Or for our program because we have a you know, fairly small group of students. And yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. the good part of it as well. It's a lot more efficient for your learning if you're if you're present at the courses because uh, the study groups are really small. So you always get like personal mentoring. And if you have any questions, there's always time for questions, and and the professors will like personally help you out with the with the homework and projects that you're given. So. Yeah, yeah, advice to be like, present. Like yeah. we did yesterday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I'm just reading through a comment uh, submitted uh, through chat privately to me from uh, Mohammed, I believe, saying, um, and I hope Mohammed correct me if I'm wrong here. I believe that uh, Mohammed is working in the photovoltaic sector, 
uh, and he has an idea saying that uh, would like to have enough energy to convert the environment where, uh, with cold climate, uh, with green hood, he says, and in the desert uh, where the water from the sea and ocean uh, would be without the salt. So just let me, uh, just allow me a second, please. And the energy can be added from the sun. Mm, Mohammed, I do apologize, but uh, I'm not sure as to as to what you mean. Mm, I will forward this uh, this text uh, to to the presenters. So perhaps we can get back to it after the session. But unfortunately, I'm not quite sure as to as to what you mean. If there is a question or a comment, please please do further elaborate on that. Thank you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Abraham would like to know if the degree is recognized outside of Finland. Degree is recognized You mean oh. academically or? I believe that is the question. Yeah, 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 of course. You would, you would be able to also go to uh, to another country, to a good university, and you do your PhD studies there. I mean, yeah. also some of our students do that. I mean, after their bachelor or after their master. They go abroad, or then after the PhD, so that you know you have in all stages you can you can really go to uh, to very good universities, also internationally. So. Yeah, and also to the the degree, the master degree is in English, so it's more easily converted to other universities for later studies as well, or mm -hmm. even just to show what you've studied uh, in the working life. Yeah, exactly. And since he, uh, students can write their thesis in, in, in English, yeah. master thesis in English, this is a good, uh, uh, good thing. You know. Yeah, because you can really show that every, every, everybody can read that. And it's like you, if you go to you know other universities or you know companies or organizations in, in any any part of the world, it's, it's kind of yeah, very very easy to show what you've been learning. Thank you very much indeed. There was another question um, submitted, well, a few of them uh, offline by, by uh, Foko Vitalis, saying that he's seriously involved in agriculture and livestock management, but would like more practical knowledge and orientation in research uh, to meet up with his objectives. And now he's saying concerning this agricultural program, would like to have more information about the possible scholarships. And then the second part would be, he would also like to know more about the living costs. So perhaps we can ask Michaela first about uh, the chances of scholarships, if you could perhaps do a quick recap. Yes. So, um, yeah, so as, as I told you earlier, there will be four categories of the scholarships, which depend on, or they differ in some, of, some of them are just half of the tuition fee and the others are the whole of the tuition fee plus the living costs. And the scholarship can be applied while you are applying to the to the master's program, and there will be about 30 scholarships awarded. And then regarding the living costs, an approximate um, or the living costs in Helsinki are approximately 700 to 1,000 euros per month. Thank you very much, Michaela. And uh, perhaps uh, I might help today's audience with a question of my own, which would be regarding the intensity of the program. And I'm aiming this question to, to AC, perhaps. Uh, the question here would be, how advisable, if even, uh, would it be to uh, work while studying? This is a full-time program. So is that something that could be done, AC? Yeah, it's, it's doable. Um, I'm currently working two jobs and studying this master's program. So it's definitely doable. but. Um, I advise to only have one job <laughs> with your studies because it is a lot of it is a lot of work and of course if you if you really well it's all up to you but if you really want to learn everything and kind of take everything to heart and really kind of you know process all the information properly then I advise to only have one job because it 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 will take time to do all the calculus and all the exercises so. If you want to do better in uni, you need to only have one job, but it's, it's definitely doable. Yeah. Thank you, Ishi. And uh, the next question would be, how easy or how hard would it be to get a job without uh, any knowledge of the Finnish language? And subsequently, are any courses offered by the university to learn Finnish? 
Yes, uh, the University offers courses uh, for uh, students. Um, uh, yeah, the, courses. Yeah, yes. the language center of the University of Helsinki offers Finnish courses for exchange students. Yes. Um, yeah, yes. so you can learn the basics and then well, if you progress, you can take some more advanced courses. Um, there, there's a lot more um, jobs for English speakers nowadays than there was before. Um, I've noticed, for example, uh, for example, um, just you know, hanging out in the city center, a lot of um, stores are hiring only English English speakers and stuff. So it's, there's definitely opportunities. Yeah, I think there are there are many companies uh, that have their working languages that yeah. just English, and of course in research there's no problem in research yeah. institutes and university. I think they have a lot of yeah. uh, lot of uh, international people people working here. Yeah. So. For example, one of my jobs uh, we only use English, so everything I do I write in English, which is really good. And there's also a lot of um, startup companies coming up in Helsinki, which are always looking for the international school that are looking for uh, English speakers and yeah definitely well it's a globalized <laughs> globalized world so most of the Finnish companies don't just want to stay here they they need to have yeah. um, an international working uh, society or community yeah. I think the only ones restricted a little bit are the like ministries or municipalities yeah they, they might have you know and okay. your chances are even better if you're not too picky about the job. If you if you're willing to work in a restaurant as a waiter or in bars or in clothing shops or retail in general, there's definitely jobs. Thank you very much, Isi, for mm -hmm. clarifying. And it seems we have no further questions submitted so either through the Q and A or the chat panel, mm -hmm. nor offline, meaning that we will be wrapping up the session. Perhaps if some of the attendees are currently in the process of submitting a question, I would like to give you some more time, but this would be your call to action to do so. So just there is one, one question that is not answered. Oh, I do apologize. So was it perhaps privately submitted to you? No, no, it's in, in the Q&A there. Oh, Luke? Luke Mother, one oh, of indeed, the Indeed, indeed. Uh, yes, a uh, good question actually from Luke. Uh, how much background in economics is needed for the program? For agricultural economics uh, and the needed level of uh, macroeconomics is needed, and uh, a basic level in uh, statistics and mathematical economics. What about it's the same same. It's the same it's for, both, for, for, for both studies. So, so in the needed uh, level course in macro and basic courses in mathematics and statistics, it yeah. would be good. So in economics, it, it would mean that you would have a basic course in economics and then an intermediate, exactly. like a follow-up course in microeconomics. So pretty much two courses from economics. Yes, yeah. yes two courses from economics. Yeah. And also, also like it would be good like, like mathematics for economics. So, yeah, like sort of like so you would know optimization and, and derivation, integrals. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. Just allow me to check on the progress of the poll. Some of you have submitted it. For those of you that are currently in the progress, make sure that you do click on the submit button, which is on the bottom right hand corner within that panel, just to make sure that you submit your questions. I apologize, answers, otherwise they will be lost and your effort will be in vain. But I now believe that we have addressed uh, each and every question submitted through either of the possibilities meaning that we will be wrapping up the session. Allow me to thank our audience firstly for joining, and I'm sure that the information today uh, shared uh, was enough for you guys to, to get an idea if you wish to study. And moreover, uh, we sure hope that some of you are actually already considering in applying. So thank you very much for joining. And also allow me to thank today's presenters, uh, Marco, Isi, Antonis, as well as Michaela. Thank you very much for your time, for sharing your expertise. And at this point, it would be wise to ask you for any closing comments you might have before we say goodbye. Well, I thank you very much for your attention. And I would really, really uh, like to see you as our students then next autumn, autumn here. You can see in, the, in that uh, Get to Know Us slide, you have our literary finder and then the next one, our program webpage, where you will have like, more information in addition to this one. You will have links to our email, you will have our phone numbers, you will have our, uh, you know, 
home pages, with our Twitter accounts, our Instagram accounts. So please do contact us by email or we can set up a Skype if you if you need. So so any any questions on the day we would like to answer and tell you more about our, our program and, and just yeah, see you next year. Thank you. And for me, um, I really hope you guys got excited about this program because I think it's it's vital uh, for our environment, for people, for everyone to have experts from this field in order to like tackle really important issues such as the climate change and and yeah and the state of the environment. So definitely, we're gonna need professionals in this area. It's really important. It's gonna even get more important in the future. So. Yep. Do everyone a favor and study with us. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you also. And if you have any further questions about admission, either to this master's program or any other international master's program, you can also e always email us to admissions at Helsinki.fi and we will always answer your emails on, or forward them to someone who might be able to help you. Hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you very much once again to all of the participants. And this is Simon wishing you a good morning, perhaps a good afternoon, or a good evening from wherever you may be. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah.